This is Jack and Ori Jr. Hi, I'm Holly, and this story is all about a man who had too much, a woman who had too little, and a cat who had just enough. It's called the King of Capri. <laughs> the King of Capri had been out to a party, and it was just the kind of party that kings like best. All his friends were there, and somebody had cooked his favorite food. The king ate as much as he could, but not as much as he would have liked. He had a bun in one hand, jelly in the other hand, but try as he might, he couldn't get all the jelly and all the bun into his mouth at once. Why have I got two hands but only one mouth? wondered the king. His advisor stood before him and said, Sire, think of all the poor people in the kingdom. They can hardly feed one mouth each. How could they ever feed two? But the king never did think about the poor people. He only thought about himself. It was midnight when the king got back to his palace. All his servants were asleep. The king looked at himself in the mirror and saw that he was covered in ice cream and treacle and egg sandwich and orange juice and bits of banana. If I had two mouths, he said to himself, I shouldn't be in this mess. How can anybody be expected to get all their food into just one mouth? Well, what could he do? He took off all his dirty clothes, except for his socks and his crown. Then he padded out onto the balcony and pegged his clothes on the line. He'd often seen clothes hanging on the line, but he didn't know you have to wash them first. Then the king got into his big bed and fell asleep. Capri is an island. The king's palace sat high up on a cliff that looked out to sea. Very often, the king would lean on his balcony and admire the view over the Bay of Naples. Across the bay was the city of Naples, where a lot of poor people lived. The poorest of them all was a washerwoman called Mrs. Jewell. If you went to Mrs. Jewell's house to look for her, you wouldn't be able to see her. For a start, Mrs. Jewell was very small and her tiny house was always full of steam. This was because she did her washing in a great big boiler. And all day long, the boiler boiled and boiled while Mrs. Jewell threw in the dirty clothes and hauled out the clean ones and never got her head out of the steam. Mrs. Jewell had a cat. The cat was called Wash. It was midnight. Mrs. Jewell and Wash had just finished their supper. Mrs. Jewell had eaten a chicken wing, 19 baked beans, a tomato and half a slice of bread. And then they were going to share a cup of milk. Two mouths to feed, Wash, said Mrs. Jewell, but only one supper. Wash rubbed his head against her hand. He was the thinnest cat in the world. He was so thin that if he swallowed a mouse, it made a big bulge in his tummy, like carrying a tennis ball in your pocket. No matter how hard Mrs. Jewell worked, she never had enough money because although everyone wanted clean clothes, no one wanted to pay much for them. Never mind, she thought. I will do my best and someday all this will change. That night, a great tempest blew in across the sea. On Capri, where the king was snoring loudly in his crown and his socks, the first thing that the wind did was to blow the peaked caps off the palace guards. And the second thing that the wind did was to blow the birds out of the trees. And the third thing that the wind did was to blow all the deck chairs off the beach. And the fourth thing that the wind did was to blow the hands off the church clock. And the fifth thing the wind did was to blow, oh, blow all the moustaches off the night watchman. And the sixth thing that the wind did was to blow the wigs off the ladies in waiting. And the seventh thing that the wind did was to blow the pyjamas off all the king's men. And the eighth thing that the wind did was to blow all the milk out of the cows. And the ninth thing that the wind did was to blow all the king's clothes off his balcony. <laughs> <laughs> 
If you had looked over the Bay of Naples that night, you would have seen the king's velvet breeches and the king's silk shirt and the king's golden waistcoat and the king's embroidered cloak all flying across the sea. And where do you think they landed? They landed on Mrs. Jewell's washing line. But she doesn't know that yet. Never in the history of Capri had there been such a wind. Everyone was woken up, except for the king, who was so fat and so weighed down with buns and jelly that even a tempest couldn't so much as blow his hair across the pillow. By morning, the news was out. Every single thing in Capri, every pot, pan, chicken and lottery ticket had been blown away. And where do you think they had all landed? It was Wash who found out first. He yawned and stretched himself, and as it was daylight, he thought he'd go for a walk outside. Mrs. Jewell had a big backyard where she dried all her laundry. And when Wash had finished walking and sniffing and rolling and looking and all the things that cats like to do, he lay down high up on the wall, his body as orange as the sun and his eyes like two gold coins. The wind was outside. Good morning, Wash, said the wind. Buongiorno, said Wash, by which Italian cats mean good morning. I had a bit of a night last night, said the wind. I'm sorry about all the stuff in your backyard. Non c'è di che, said Wash, who wasn't taking any notice and who just said don't mention it. Then Wash looked. Then he looked again. Then he looked again and again. It looked as if the whole world had piled itself up in Mrs. Jewell's backyard. There was a bed with somebody still asleep in it. On top of the bed was a cow. On top of the cow was a vacuum cleaner. On top of the vacuum cleaner was a bicycle. On top of the bicycle was a box of apples. On top of the apples was a duck. And on top of the duck was a pair of knickers. On top of the pair of knickers was a big pan of chicken soup. I'll eat that, said Wash. He climbed up, and while he was slurping from the pan, he realized that everything he had ever seen in his life was piled up in the backyard. I didn't know where else to put it, said the wind. You do these things in a moment of madness, and then you're left with the mess. But Wash didn't answer because he was too busy eating. I'll clear it up later, said the wind. Goodbye, Wash. Ciao, said Wash, by which Italian cats mean goodbye. The wind flew off and everything was still. When Mrs. Jewell came out with her first load of laundry, she saw Wash, round as a ball, fast asleep on a pair of knickers. She saw that the whole world was in her backyard. Well, I'll be blowed, she said. Now, Wash and Mrs. Jewell were rich. They had everything they needed, but best of all, Mrs. Jewell had a new suit of clothes. These are fit for a king, she said, when she saw the velvet breeches, the silk shirt, the gold waistcoat and the embroidered cloak. She soon had the stains out, and when she put on the clothes, she looked like, well, what do you think she looked like? She looked like a queen. News soon spread that there was a queen come to Naples who had all the treasure in the world in her backyard. Every morning, she sat on an upturned laundry basket and graciously received her visitors. To the rich, she gave advice, and to the poor, she gave money. She had plenty of money because Wash had found the king's treasure chest underneath a box of fish. What of the king of Capri? Well, he and everybody who lived on the island were now as poor as the people of Naples had been before the wind blew everything across the sea. The king had nothing to wear but his socks and his crown and an old dressing gown that belonged to the gardener. All his servants and all his friends gradually left him, one by one, to work for the Queen of Naples. She was building a palace in her backyard. Soon, the king was the only person left on the island. He was lonely and sad and thin. How glad I am that I only have one mouth to feed, he said to himself. If I had two mouths, I should be twice as hungry. And he thought of all the food he'd wasted and thrown away 
and of the many times he'd refused to give the beggars anything to eat. Then, one day, he swallowed his pride and rode across the bay to see the Queen of Naples. How splendid everything looked on the glittering coastline. There were market stalls selling fresh bread and people running about building things and making things. Everyone seemed happy and full. When he asked the way to the Queen's house, they told him how good and kind and generous she was. And the King remembered that no one had ever said that about him. He came to the marvellous palace and there was an enormous orange cat sitting on the front step. Is the Queen at home? asked the king. See, 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 said Wash, by which Italian cats mean yes. The king could hear somebody singing, so he went round the back, and there was Mrs. Jewel, now Queen of Naples, standing over a steaming tub and washing her nightdress. Have you no servants? asked the king. Hundreds, said the queen. But where's the fun in that? Mm, I used to have servants once, said the king. Then he looked closely at Mrs. Jewel, Come to think of it, I used to have a suit of clothes just like the ones you're wearing. What? Like these, said the Queen. Well, mine had a few stains on them, it's true. And then the King told the story of how every single thing on his island had been blown away by a tempest. Wash! shouted the Queen. Come here! Do you know anything about a tempest? Wash slunk round the corner and had to tell the whole story about how the wind had dropped everything from Capri into Mrs. Jewel's backyard, including the king's clothes. Well, you'd better take it all back then, hadn't you? said Mrs. Jewel to the king. But what would you do then? asked the king. Oh, go back to the laundry business, I suppose, said Mrs. Jewel. Only I wouldn't want Wash to be hungry again. The king was silent for a while, and while he was silent, he was looking at the sunshine and the flowers and wondering why he never used to look at them before. Then he looked at Mrs. Jewel and thought she was as lovely as sunshine and flowers and that if she were with him, he would be happy and good for the rest of his life. He said, when I was king of Capri, I used to long for two mouths so that I could eat twice as much food. I should like two mouths now, my own and yours to talk to me, my own and yours to smile at me, my own and yours to kiss good morning and to kiss good night. And the king asked Mrs. Jewel to marry him. And what do you think she said? The king and Mrs. Jewel were married in great style and everyone from Naples and Capri was invited and everyone had enough to eat and a present to take home. The best guest of all was Wash's old friend, the wind, who carefully blew everybody's possessions back to the right place so that the bed went back to the bedroom, the cow went back to her field, and the vacuum cleaner went back in the cupboard, and the bicycle went riding down to the road, and the apples, well, they had been eaten, and the duck went back to her pond, and the knickers went back in the drawer, and the pan of soup, well, that had been eaten too. And Wash, who had eaten it on that very first morning when the wind had made a queen of Mrs. Jewel, licked his lips and lay on the wall, his fur as orange as the sun and his eyes like two gold coins. Bye for now.